number of the regular listeners noticed that I was a wee bit animated yesterday in a lot of what I had to share, and it may even be more so today. I've got a bunch of news stories to share, and I'm going to tell you what, I feel like that cartoon character Popeye right now. That's all I can stand. I can't stand no more. This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. And welcome to the weekend edition of Truth to Ponder. I'm your host, Bob Bierman. So glad that so many of you actually are with me uh, four and five days a week. I know some of you only hear the program on the weekend. So we try to condense a lot of what we talked about earlier in the week, maybe a message of hope. We, We try to bring it all together on the weekend edition. And today, I've just been looking at a a large number of news stories. Now, this past week, for those that have been following the work that I'm involved with currently on a project, it's oftentimes very difficult for me to to have the time to do this radio program. And uh, this week has been one of the hardest so far. And here we are at the last minute putting this program together uh, right ahead of the weekend. And I've got so many stories, and I want to share many of these with you today. Some of these make me very upset, very, very upset. And there's a reason I feel that way. We started this radio program about a year and a half ago, every day, Monday through Friday. And I started the program, I thought about it over the summer of 2020, that there was something just didn't feel right about all the COVID narrative that we were getting. I felt some really despicable politics. Uh, Things were being said that made no common sense. It became clear that there were some people that were out and out lying. It was obvious that many were taking advantage of this so-called global pandemic to accomplish other things things that had nothing to do with the pandemic. And today I just seem to have run across, oh, about a dozen or so news stories. I'm going to try to give you some of the highlights of these stories, and I want you to think it through and see what kind of reaction you have. Now, you get into countries like the United Kingdom and Canada, Australia, Austria, parts of Europe. They've gone COVID crazy. I mean, they are COVID idiots. Uh, mass COVIDians, the cult of COVID. We're going to defeat a virus by by wearing face diapers and staying at home and and using an experimental vaccine on every living creature on the planet. And the evidence says it doesn't really work. But insanity is what they're doing. They're doing the same things over and over again and expecting a different result. And they have the mainstream media behind them. They have the globalist behind them. They have Klaus Schwab and and the uh, World Economic Forum behind them. They've got Bill Gates and I Want to Vaccinate the World behind them. And they've got some of the creepiest cast of characters I've ever seen in my life promoting their agenda. And whenever the truth comes out, they use their friends in social media, their friends at the New York Slimes or CNN or MSNBC or, you know, the BBC or the CBC or the ABC in Australia. They'll use their friends to continue the lie, warp the truth and spread fear. Now, just to give you an example, Omicron from wherever it came, and I'm reading stories, maybe this was, uh, shall we say, another lab escape. Maybe this is the, quote, uh, cure for the original COVID. I mean, that's what some people are saying. I don't know. Maybe it, it could be. But then again, we also know that all viruses will mutate. And, and to believe there's only been, oh, five or 10 or 12 mutations since two years ago, is a fool's errand. Ask any competent physician. They'll tell you they learn in medical school early on. This virus probably mutated 
thousands upon thousands upon thousands of times over the two years. It just seems that some strains become more dominant. And a virus in nature, over time, becomes vastly more contagious than it was, but also less lethal to the host. That's just what happens in in God's nature. And here we are with Omicron. They try to gin up the fear back when, you know, with with Biden wishing you a you know a season of of darkness, sickness, and death because of Omicron. The mainstream media here in the United States were having to do contortions trying to lead us to believe the first person died of Omicron in Texas. Turns out the individual in his 50s had so many life-threatening other illnesses long-term that his survival with or without Omicron was highly in doubt. But that's what, that's what the shameful, despicable, full of filth and lie media wanted you to believe. These elitists, these satanic elitists want to confuse you, scare you, and manipulate you. But it's hard sometimes to hide the facts. You know, the United Kingdom, well, if you look at the data, they are now moving past their Omicron peak. And and as it's going to happen everywhere, it's going to happen quite quickly. Hospitalizations are leveling off. The mortality plateau is following probably by the middle of this coming week. And because Omicron, we know, causes such minor illness in the vast majority of people, official case rates will substantially underestimate its prevalence. In other words, a lot of people have had Omicron that are not being counted. They're not wasting their time taking one of these stupid tests. They figure either I've got a nasty cold, uh, allergies, Or I've got Omicron, and I'm tired, and I need sleep. I'm going to stay home a few days and get better and go back to work. They don't want to be counted in these statistics. So truthfully, I think the case numbers of people that actually have symptoms. Now, that's something else we're going to get into here in a moment, too. People that are symptomatic with Omicron, you know, for the next several days or a week or so, you're going to have, you know, a bit of a cough. You're going to have sinus and sneezing, kind of like a common cold. And you're going to be tired. Even as you're still coughing, your ability to transmit the virus is rapidly disappearing. Those that actually have been proven right over the past two years are saying that probably the day or maybe the day before you show your symptoms, you might be able to pass along the virus and maybe for one to two days after you show symptoms. And then after that, your body is just responding like it would an allergen. And you're going to be coughing or whatever it is. And you're, and as your body fights it, you're tired. I'm not sure if you're going to agree with this line or not, but I've been doing some reading and there are, are some of the frontline doctors that have been dead on the money from day one about all of this, that however this variant called Omicron came about, it may be one of the greatest blessings in disguise. Now, I'm not sure if I 100% agree, but here's what I do know. People, People that are coming down with Omicron, are showing mild symptoms, and they are recovering quite rapidly. They're not ending up in the hospital for the most part. Unless, and if you dig into the data more and more, nobody is going to the hospital because of just Omicron. And here's something else that that is kind of snuck out of the news. A lot of people go to the hospital for a lot of things. I mean, we don't go to the hospital for COVID only. I mean, prior to 2020, what did we go to the hospital for? Car wrecks, heart attacks, you name it. All kind of diseases, including cancer, gallbladder, you you, you, you know, 
Name what you can think of that puts somebody in the hospital. A lot of things do. Long before COVID. And one of the things the hospitals are doing right now, and it varies just a little bit where you're at. I'm going to talk in terms of you know, North America, United States, and I'm sure it's similar to some degree elsewhere. Anytime you go to the hospital now, anytime you go to the hospital now, for whatever the reason, you got bumped over by a car on a highway because you were jaywalking and, and you've broken a bone. They're going to test you for COVID-19 or the coronavirus. And if you test positive, even though you have zero symptoms, or it could be old virus from who knows where, you are now magically classified as a COVID patient. Are you following what I'm saying? You are now classified as a COVID patient, even though you're there for a broken leg. The problem is, and we're beginning to see this coming out when somebody says, so is Omicron or or COVID why they're in the hospital? No. Are they showing symptoms? No. Are they infecting others? We don't think so. But they're a COVID patient by Jiggers, and we're going to count it. Well, in some cases, between 40 and 60% of those that are being counted in the hospital as COVID patients are not there for COVID at all. They have no COVID symptoms. They are not in COVID uh, ICUs. They're not on ventilators. They're not on death's door. They're recovering from something else, but they just happened to test positive. Which brings me to the next headline. How many false positives are there? And why do we continue to use the PCR test all the way to the end of December? The PCR test, you know, that was the the gold standard. February of 2020, all of 2020, all of 2021, we used a test that can be very subjective and give false positive readings, more than false negatives. And here's why. The inventor of the PCR test, who happened to die uh, just before the pandemic, strange as that may sound, wasn't all that old, always said never use the PCR test in any shape, manner, or form as your sole diagnostic. Because you'll get a lot of, uh, well, questionable results. It's just one tool in the toolkit to help understand if somebody has any virus going on in their body. It's just one of many tools, but not a sole tool. And the big problem you then run into with this PCR test is the amplification factor. Now, I'm going to make this really easy to understand. How many of you remember, maybe somewhere in school, Given the choice of would you like $100,000 or a penny doubled every day for a month? And if you're not thinking it through, you'll take the hundred grand, not realizing that if you doubled a penny every day for a month, what the number becomes. I mean, let's face it. On day number one, you get to two cents. Then you get to four cents. Then you get to eight cents. And you get the 16 cents. You, you break a dollar. It takes you a week to get to a dollar. But by the end of the month, now you got a million some odd dollars. That's how a PCR test works. It takes some viral fragment and it artificially doubles it. Then it doubles it again and doubles it again. Those are called cycle thresholds, CT. So... If you have a CT of 20, that means you're doubling it, you know, 20 different times and you get this huge number. The inventor of the test said when you get past like uh, CTs of 22, 23, you're going to pick up meaningless garbage and get a, a just a boatload, boatload of false positives. We saw during 2020 and 2021 various labs and states using dramatically different CTs or cycle thresholds. 
some cases as high as 40, which is just absurd. If you had a common cold three years ago, you're going to probably show it up in that kind of a fraudulent test. And and now, you know, the CDC recognized this. That's why they quietly have withdrawn the uh, PCR test at the end of this year. No big fanfare. It's just not there anymore. And so we had all these case numbers and case numbers and case numbers. And what do case numbers mean? If somebody is not sick, if somebody's not making anybody else sick, if somebody's not spreading it, are they really sick? Do they really have COVID? Yet we're led to believe by the bankrupt intellectually, morally, and spiritually mainstream media that it's all about case numbers. Cases, cases, cases. Dr. Tony Fauci and his cases. We have so many cases. We have to wear a face mask. We have to lock down. We have to destroy businesses. We have to ruin lives, close down schools, make little children wear face diapers, shame them, put them into fear because we have all these bogus case numbers. The worst part to me about this pandemic are the multiple lies that have been, well, let's say just pushed by Dr. Anthony Fauci and the mainstream media. And they keep moving the goalpost, changing the rules, and nobody nobody questions it. How many things did Fauci say that were absolutely bogus, wrong, and he knew it at the time, but he's never held accountable. And I'm going to tell you something else. If he's called before the Senate of the United States, he's an arrogant little man with an attitude. I believe the man is a liar. I mean, I believe the man is a danger. I believe the man has broken the law multiple times and is continuing to break the law and perjure himself for doing things that should put him in prison for the rest of his life. We now have papers that have come out from one of the most secret programs in the military, DARPA. Even they didn't want to fool around with coronavirus stuff, and they put the nicks on it. And so what does Fauci do? He just does it anyway. Does a workaround. Uses some of his buddies, like Peter Daszak at the um, EcoHealth Alliance. Dr. Ralph Barrick. University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. And they know the law says in 2014 you can't do this, so they just take it off to China and and, and through a third party. So it's not Fauci and his gain-of-function game anymore. It's a third party. We didn't do it. And, and then to argue and just downright lie. And you don't dare question you know, the wizard of COVID. Do not arouse the wrath of the great and powerful Oz. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. The great and Oz has spoken. Who are you? Oh, I, I, I am the great and powerful wizard of Oz. And outside of being a pathological liar, I can find no better way to describe the wizard of COVID himself, the liar of the NIH, the one that funded the lab work at Wuhan and tried to deny it, tried to get social media, trying to get the news media, trying to get everybody to to make sure you couldn't say that this virus came out of a lab in Wuhan. And if you tried to make such a statement, you found your postings were called false, they would disappear. If you continued... You would be deplatformed. You'd be taken off social media because you're giving false and misleading information, which happens to be true. Which brings me to my next story. Outside of um, Dr. Anthony Fauci. And in case you missed that, that was uh, Dr. Fauci 
after being questioned in front of the United States Senate, he doesn't want to answer anybody's questions. He's Dr. Fauci. He's the wizard of COVID. How dare you impugn my reputation and all my years of government service spending billions upon billions of taxpayer dollars on questionable and dangerous programs? How dare you ask how much money comes into my agency? How dare you challenge who I am? I am the great wizard of COVID. How dare you? And if you ask him a question that he does not want to answer, he basically calls you names. What a moron. Of course, followed by taking the Lord's name in vain. I'm not going to play that. But Dr. Anthony Fauci... He has been the face of the virus here in the United States and to many parts of the world where he's given all these wonderful accolades. You know, the wonderful, wonderful bedside manner of Dr. Anthony Fauci. And how many times has he moved the goalpost? How many times has he changed his mind? How many times has he tried to bury the work that he was doing knowing it was most likely illegal So right at the very beginning, all of us that worked in emergency management understood something. We had seen information that was coming out in our daily briefings that talked about something that most of us never knew before, that there was a level four virology lab in the city of Wuhan, China. How how convenient. And when that information was on the verge of going public, how fast that narrative was crushed. And now we see the emails, the emails that came out because of a freedom of information request. And Dr. Fauci is squirming. He's angry. He's mad. Not because you're impugning his character. It's because the real character of Dr. Fauci is now being revealed. He's like anybody else that does evil. He wants to hide that evil in the darkness. The last thing he wants is the light of truth on the work that he was doing and all of his friends. And it is my hope and prayer that in this year of 2022 that I have felt so strongly that a wave of unstoppable truth is going to break forth across the globe. We're beginning to see it in all kinds of places, in places I didn't expect. And I've got a bunch of stuff I want to share on that on the program today as well. But Dr. Anthony Fauci needs to be fired, needs to be investigated, and potentially charged with crimes against humanity for what he has done. I don't need him calling his detractors. What a moron. No, Dr. Anthony Fauci needs to be in depositions, a full investigation, and ultimately, I believe, a trial for the things that he has done for the past 20 to 30 years, many of which we now are beginning to understand could be highly illegal. And I want to know how he became the highest paid government employee. Why did he get some of the benefits and permanent bonuses that he got over the years? What did he do to earn them? And why does he try to hide so much of what he does? As I mentioned before, we now know from material that has been finally released that the coronavirus research was deemed too dangerous by DARPA, but was approved by Fauci, and conducted via EcoHealth Alliance at the lab in Wuhan. (laughs) It was called Project Diffuse. And an investigation now has made shocking discoveries regarding the origin of COVID-19. And the gain of research, you know, the gain of function research that Fauci denies to enhance that, that virus. And I'm telling you, They're still fighting hard to keep the narrative under control. But I really believe that the light of God's truth is going to catch many in a web. I mean, these bat-born coronaviruses, when have we ever seen in history a massive worldwide pandemic 
because of a naturally occurring bat-to-human transmission of a virus. You don't. But you get somebody like Dr. Anthony Fauci, and you have a pox upon the house of the world. What a plague. And I hope that he's held accountable. Once again, you know, we're getting all the emails now that Dr. Fauci was the key player in hiding all the work in Wuhan and putting out the fake and phony narrative two years ago. Oh, it came out of a bat cave. It had nothing to do with the research at a viral lab. I have nothing to do with it, but I'm here to tell you how to save your life. You morons. I mean, that's how he looks at you. There's a lot more lot more in this program. And we're going to get into this, like I say. This is going to be quite a program today. I've got more to go. By the way, New Jersey governor, he decides to extend his emergency powers uh, when the when the Senate of the state of New Jersey wouldn't give it to him. Another little, you know, dictator tyrant. How the state of New Jersey could vote that reprobate back into office again after all that he's done to destroy the state of New Jersey, tax it out of business, chase the good people away. How he could be in power is beyond me. Yep, Phil Murphy. He's now got a new executive order so he can still run around and be your happy little dictator destroying your life in Jersey. Then this other story that got me angry. And I know it has to do with McDonald's in in Canada, the you know the the hamburger joint. The Ronald McDonald House houses in British Columbia and Yukon, Canada. They plan to evict child cancer patients and their parents if they don't get their COVID nineteen killer shot, blood clot shot by the end of January. Beginning on January 17th, everybody five years in age or older who are working, staying, or visiting at those locations, you know, the Ronald McDonald House, must have proof of two killer doses in addition to completing our existing screening. I'm telling you, McDonald's food is bad enough. Now you have a good reason to say no to McDonald's, their fries, and their mystery meat burgers. I'm getting so sick of these woke corporations like Coca-Cola and others that are buying into the lies, demanding that you obey. I think all of this will come back to haunt them as the truth, I pray, comes out. Now, when I come back in a moment, I've got a bunch of stories I'm going to try to get through as quick as I can back to back. You don't want to miss these stories. Some are going to give you encouragement. Some will make you a little bit on the angry side, and others are going to prove that maybe what you were thinking all along was correct to begin with. Now, if you're listening to this program on radio, would you let me know how? Would you kindly send me a direct email to my personal uh, Truth to Ponder address? Nobody else reads it but me. And no, I'm not harvesting an email list. I'm not going to be giving you lots of emails about the program. Actually, I'm not going to do it at all. But if you let me know how you listen, I would appreciate it. That email address is bob at truth, the number two ponder.com. Bob at truth, the number two ponder.com. By the way, mail is beginning to catch up to me. There seemed to be a delay for a while with the U.S. Postal Service. Wherever you were mailing from, some, some states were worse than others, getting mail from point A to point B. And so it's beginning to catch up. Uh, but our mailing address is... By the way, if you want to support us financially, make a check payable to Ancient Word Radio. Mail to Truth to Ponder, 5753, Highway 85 North, 5753, Highway 85 North, number 3248. That's number 3248, and that is in Crestview, Florida. Crestview, Florida, 32536, Crestview, Florida, 32536. What a move. This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Beerman. Tracing Messiah. Coming up. 
Shalom Alechem. Peace be to you, my friend in Messiah. This is the nice Jewish boy, Jonathan Kahn, your Jewish connection, bringing you the riches of your Jewish roots in Jesus. Now get your pen out as fast as you can so you don't miss out on receiving a special free gift you'll get and love in a moment. In school, do you ever have to draw something and you try and you got a mess? But then you see the masterpiece and you you trace it. You trace an original picture. And all you have to do is put the masterpiece behind your paper and follow the lines. And pretty soon you have a pretty good image. It was sort of like cheating, but you could have a, sort of like a masterpiece. Well, let me tell you a secret in the Lord. In 1 Peter 2.21, it says that the Lord is, now in the original language, the word is hupogramos. It means the underwriting. It means the writing that's placed underneath that scribes use to copy. So Messiah's life is the hupogramos. It's the underwriting. And let me tell you how to apply this to your life. It's amazing. See, when you follow your own will, you'll end up with a mess. But your life can become a masterpiece. How? Well, realize Messiah is not just the teacher of your life. He's not just the hope of your life. He's the hupogramos. He means he's the one you trace. You can trace. You see how you put him up to your life, up against your life, in front of your life. You line up your life, your heart, his heart, to your way, his way, your way, and see if it lines up or not. And then you start tracing it. You guide everything by that. What would Jesus do? What would Messiah do? What would he do? Learn of him. Be of him. Imitate him. Follow him line by line. Don't go to left or right. Be like him. Follow your course as Messiah because he is the underwriting, the hupogramos, and your life will become a masterpiece. Want more? Ask for the hupogramos. Now, how'd you like to receive special daily meditations and teachings of the riches of your Jewish roots in Jesus to give you victory for every day of your week and updates on Israel prophecy, a free subscription to Sapphires and the incredible Mystery of the Temple doors all free. You'll love it. How do you get all this? Just remember, Jesus is real Hebrew name, Yeshua, and you dial it. That's it. Just dial 1-800-YESHUA-1. You will be blessed, but call now. That's 1-800-YESHUA-1. I invite you to join me in the Great Commission to bring salvation back to the Jewish people, reach millions of unreached people, peoples around the world on five continents. How? Just call 1-800-YESHUA-1. You can literally blanket the earth with the gospel through shortwave radio. You can blanket the earth. We do it every week. It's incredible. Just call Y-E-S-H-U-A-1. Now you can write me direct. Here's how. Just write to the nice Jewish boy box 1111. That's in Lodi, L-O-D-I, New Jersey, 07644. It's the nice Jewish boy box 1111, Lodi, L-O-D-I, New Jersey, 07644. Till next time, this is Jonathan Kahn saying... Trace him, my friend, and you'll have a masterpiece, line by line. God bless you in the Sar Shalom Messiah, Prince of Peace. is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. And welcome back to part two of our weekend edition of Truth to Ponder. I'm your host, Bob Bierman. As I went to the break, I shared that troubling story from the Ronald McDonald House, and I'm sure they're under pressure from the Canadian government to do this. Yet the evidence, and this is the problem, You've got these governments and you've got these agencies, you've got these reprobates demanding that everybody get a shot, that it's going to somehow magically cure and just get rid of COVID worldwide. It's going to wipe it out. And we've known for decades, if not a century, it doesn't work that way. We're trying to make you believe a lie that if you inject this garbage into your body, it'll magically make you COVID proof and nothing can be farther from the truth become evident that the people that are most spreading the Omicron variant in higher numbers and at higher percentages per person are the fully vaccinated. In other words, if you're trying to avoid COVID, avoid somebody that's been vaccinated, the odds are you'll be more likely to get it from a vaccinated person than an unvaccinated person. Those are the real numbers that are coming out. And so what does our reprobate president do? Get a vaccine. Get your booster. Get your fourth booster. Take 10 boosters. Keep getting boosters. Make Pfizer happy again. Make Pfizer big and powerful. And let's keep 
And you got to keep Dr. Fauci's favorite company, Moderna, you know, got to keep the billionaires coming. And these woke companies think that they're, you know, they're, they're trying to put their finger in the wind and see which way it's blowing. And they think everybody's all pro-vaccine and let's get rid of the corona. And then you have any woke cause. You got McDonald's, you know, they're going to follow suit. They don't really care about you. They care about how they look politically. Just like Coca-Cola. You know, Lenin once said, and I read this recently, that capitalists would sell him the rope he would use to hang them. And you know something? Given the chance, Coca-Cola would sell, sell that rope in a vending machine. You know, when you go back to when Georgia last year finally did some repairs to their broken elect- uh, you know, election system that was broken by, you know, Brad Raffsenberger, the Secretary of State. Well, Coca-Cola got all indignant. You know, you can't do that. And we're, we're upset. We're so mad at you. We want, we want to see the, you know, the Major League Baseball take the All-Star game out of Atlanta and send it to the most white city in the country, Denver, Colorado, and destroy and hurt black-owned businesses that were really looking forward to this wonderful way to help financially. And so what does big Coca-Cola do? They're on the bandwagon. To let's move this to, you know, the, the, the whitest city in the United States. You can't make this stuff up. Yet Coca-Cola is a major sponsor of the Beijing Olympic Games, despite the fact that China is the greatest source of evil and slavery in the world. Oh, yeah. They'll suck up to Beijing. But if you try to make voting, by the way, voting is easier. It's just harder to cheat in Georgia now, but easier to vote. And that's got Coca-Cola all bent out of shape. Yet they love China because their love of money is the root of all their evil. You know, China has stripped Hong Kong of its freedom. It threatens Taiwan. It abuses human rights. It commits genocide. And, and yet we're supposed to, you know, Coca-Cola, you know, cozies up to those dictators And remain silent on those issues. Just like the NBA and other American sports teams. How disgusting. Now let me change gears for a couple of minutes here. I don't want to miss these stories. And I saw this one and I want to just give you some commentary on it. We see that a Civil War rehearsal is what this this is called. That the United States Army is going to be conducting a two-week guerrilla war training exercise in North Carolina. And they're going to do that to teach special forces how to overthrow an illegitimate government. And, And this came just on the heels of the Department of Injustice run by reprobates. You know, they really don't care about justice. It's all politics. Garland Merrick, Merrick, what what a piece of work he is. What a danger he is. What an evil man he is, in my opinion. And and they're going to have this this operation called Robin Sage. Robin Sage. And it's supposed to place these soldiers in a politically unstable, fictional country and uses unconventional guerrilla warfare to defeat a numerically superior army. Now, I've had my experience with with training exercise and drills. 2009 and 2010, I was involved with one of the largest drills of its type conducted in the United States. But see, that drill was based on outside terror, something like, you know, you would expect from a foreign government uh, hostile to the United States trying to do something within our borders because they don't have the ability to, quote, wage conventional war. But something about this entire program seems very disturbing to me 
many citizens in that part of the world are are concerned because it seems like the exercise encourages these soldiers to target civilians. These young vaccinated army soldiers will be battling seasoned freedom fighters is what they're claiming. And this will happen in two dozen North Carolina counties over a two-week period where they attempt to overthrow an illegitimate government. Like I say, the news of the training exercise comes just days after the anniversary of the Capitol riot, which the left calls an insurrection. And there's some things about that entire scenario that are really becoming very frightening to me. Uh, there were, I think there were too many government FBI plants in the crowd that made sure that it went over the top. There are people being charged with things to which they have no proof. But then again, the government can outspend you. You know, if, if you if I'm accused of something I didn't do by the federal government, how am I going to defend myself? They're going to keep coming after me and after me until I'm dead broke, out of money, and starving on the streets. I mean, the power of our federal government is limitless against an individual. And, and to have such a dangerous training exercise, in my opinion, and having this new organization about domestic terrorism, and now we're finding out from emails that our own White House, would you think, they're the ones that solicited the phony letter out of the Teachers Union Association uh, calling parents that would ever challenge what education does as domestic terrorists. I believe people in our government that pull that stunt, number one, should resign or be fired and also charged criminally and then sued civilly. Lose all their benefits for doing a stunt like that. That's un-American. We don't need war games preparing for an uprising of America. We don't need it. We need those that have sworn their lives to the Constitution of the United States to take that oath seriously and not follow these dictators like Hitler's youth into their own self-destruction. I'm a firm believer that the left is an evil, despicable, satanically originated group of people. Every time the left raises their ugly head around the world, nothing but death, destruction, and misery follow. There's never been a time when a leftist government takes power and the majority of people can be at peace and live without fear. It never happens that way. And as I said, our Justice Department, you know, calling American parents that question what some of these leftist educators and bureaucrats are doing with all this ever-increasing tax money. Let me ask this question. Why is it that the cost of education rises far more rapidly than inflation and has done for the last 50 years? And the quality of the educational product is deteriorating, going down. College campuses used to be a place of open discussion and actual learning. Now it's indoctrination and intimidation. You know, I I did a program a lot of people responded to, and I challenged, number one, the value and the cost of today's college education. Who wants to be $160,000 in debt for a degree in gender studies? What are you going to do with it? You know, sell coffee at Starbucks? Why do you want to study to promote a mental illness like gender dysphoria and try to call it normal? But see, the educating class, they're secure because, see, they get all these federally, you know, guaranteed dollars, federally guaranteed dollars in loans. And they can spend it like drunken sailors. And I think I'm offending drunken sailors who probably have more respect for their money than colleges do for yours. We've come to a very low place in America. And and we look at this administration, 
and people are, you know, 33% approval rate and going down. You've got Kamala Harris, vice president of the United States. And if you live overseas and outside of the United States, 90% of the garbage you get on your news is just garbage, just garbage and lies and more garbage and lies and more garbage and lies. Propaganda. Hitler's propaganda machine. Stalin's propaganda machine. They are bowing down to how well it's done today. It's amazing, isn't it? It's horrific that we are, you know, in a time of of control and lies. And how we were told, oh, wear a face mask. Don't wear a face mask. Face mask will save lives. And, and, you know, it's coming out. They really don't do anything. Well, there are some that can, but they're awfully expensive. And nobody wears them. I see all these older people walking around wearing these cloth face masks, you know, like little bandana things. And they think they're saving themselves from a virus. They're not doing anything but wasting their time and shortening their breath. Now, there's something else that's troubling me a little bit. You know, we have an incompetent administration in the United States in the Biden administration. Kamala Harris, somebody said she's kind of like the the uh, kid in high school writing a book report on a book they didn't read. That's how she goes to any press conference. Totally unprepared. Knows little or nothing about the topics. She's just a face. And an incompetent one at that. I mean, her time as attorney general in in California says it all. Just horrible. Just horrid. And and the things that she did. I mean, she's smoking dope while, you know, charging people with smoking dope. I mean, that's just, she's a two-faced hypocrite who has no business, had no business being a senator and has no business being the vice president and has no business even, you know, being in, in, in local government. She's too incompetent. But see, the foreign media is going to just bow. Oh, they're going to just fawn all over Grandpa Biden. You know, Grandpa Dementia. It's disgusting. And these are the people trying to negotiate peace between Russia and the Ukraine. And I've I've got a really bad feeling that because of our actions, we are forcing Russia into a war. I'm telling you, I believe the reprobates in charge of our United States government are pushing us close to war with Russia, or at least as a, shall we say, proxy war. We're doing some things there that are despicable once again. And our fingers are on doing some very deep and evil things behind the lines. And we're going to be forced into a war. I see it coming. It's the only way to save the Biden administration's complete collapse of everything. Ports in China are going to be shutting down. They're going to be using the virus thing to really hurt the world some more. And so you think you see empty shelves today? You ain't seen nothing yet, or at least for things you depend upon from China. Yeah, we made a big mistake years ago, shutting down industry in the United States for cheap labor overseas. And now we've become dependent upon communists to keep our republic going. Doesn't that sound kind of stupid? And, and, and it, it happened during the Clinton years. It happened during the George W. years. Happened during the Obama years. And we tried to stop it during the Trump years. And the world elites hated that idea. And thus the pandemic is released upon the world. They're going to get their way. I mean, they're going to have to do something in the Biden administration here in the United States. Highest inflation in over 40 years. 7% in December alone. Went to the grocery store yesterday with my wife, and we're looking at the prices that they just keep going up and up and up. And where is it going to end? Now, a little quick trip across the border into Canada. And I'm reading this material, and I want you to listen carefully. We've said a lot on this radio program in our year and a half. And we've said some things that have got got postings uh, banished off uh, Twitter, it's gotten 
my program taken down many a time from YouTube and Facebook challenging my narrative, which, by the way, has always proven out to be true in time. The tech tyrants are always the ones that are, they're they're the propagandists. They're the truth haters. And we see data now from the Canadian province of Alberta confirming figures we're seeing from all over the world, which now totally contradicts the narrative that Biden and others have pushed out, you know, the pandemic of the unvaccinated. How many times have you heard that? And we're seeing this amazing, weird spike in people right after they're vaccinated. Now, they try to hide it by by saying you got to wait so many weeks after the second shot before you can count any of this. Um, so from the time you get your first shot till a couple of weeks after you get your second shot, you're still unvaccinated. What a little uh, trick, you know, what, that little sleight of hand, a little Houdini magic there. But see, there's been this abnormal number of cases among those that are recently vaccinated. It showed in a population of 4.4 million people in Alberta, the infections and hospitalizations and those that died all soared in the days and weeks after people received their first dose of the vaccine. Makes no sense. And you look at the you look at the actual chart. It's scary. It is totally scary that your greatest danger is right after taking the vaccine. And that includes hospitalization and death. And yet Omicron works its way across the world with minimal issues for most people. Many people are beginning to think that what happens with these vaccines is during the early time, right after you get your first shot and you think you're bulletproof, you actually have a depleted immune system. And it makes you more subject to getting sick because of taking these vaccines. Who would have thunk it? And by a little tomfoolery and trickery, You know, by saying that, oh, you got to be so many weeks after the second dose before you can count any of this stuff. This way they can claim they're unvaccinated people. Yet, all these major illnesses are occurring in the newly vaccinated, which they're trying to declare are the unvaccinated. (laughs) In other words, they're telling sweet little lies again. Now, I want to share real quick the text of a letter. And this, this letter came from... Professor Ewid uh, Quimrod, and he's uh, in Israel. And, and this letter was written back in just about a week and a half ago. And, and he, the title of the letter is to the Ministry of Health, It's Time to Admit Failure. And he writes, and I'm just going to read parts of this. I'm not going to have time to read it all, but it's going to make you really think. In the end, the truth will always be revealed, and the truth about the coronavirus policy is beginning to be revealed. When destructive concepts collapse one by one, there is nothing left but to tell the experts who led the management of the pandemic, your failures, and we told you so. Two years late in Israel, they're finally realizing that a respiratory virus cannot be defeated and that such attempt is doomed to fail. And they write, he writes, you do not admit it because you have admitted almost no mistake in two years. But in retrospect, it's clear you failed miserably in virtually all of your actions. And even the media who is on your side are beginning to have a hard time in covering your lies and your shame. This is going to be true across the world, friends. The letter continues, you refuse to admit that infection comes in waves and fades by themselves. Despite years of observations and scientific knowledge, you denied it. You insisted every arbitrary little thing you did um, made things better, which was a false propaganda narrative. Once again, you defeated it again and again and again, and it came back. In other words, you don't know what you're talking about. You refuse to admit that recovery is far more protective than a vaccine, especially these experimental vaccines. 
despite previous knowledge and observation, showing that non-recovered vaccinated people are far more likely to be infected than recovered non-vaccinated people. How about that? You refuse to admit that the vaccinated are contagious despite the observations. In other words, they're the ones spreading Omicron. They're the ones that were spreading Delta, the vaccinated. You failed. Governments across the world, including Israel, the United States, Canada, Australia. Australia, you guys have gone nuts down there. You're crazy. Um, you know, Austria, you're, you're getting back into your Nazi selves of the 30s again with what you're doing. You insist on ignoring the facts that the disease is dozens of times more dangerous for people in risk groups and much older adults than for anybody else that are not in a group. We knew that back in 2020. But, you know, you don't want to admit it. You want everybody to believe that if your little kid gets COVID, they're going to collapse and die. We had a family member. Somebody got sick in our family. It was only like in their 30s. Oh, so how long before they die? What do you mean before they die? This is the kind of insanity the media's been pushing out there and people have been eating it up. People are we're going to have a mental illness problem on our hands. You know, 60,000 scientists and medical professionals signed the Barrington Declaration. And governments have chosen to ridicule, slander, distort, and discredit them. Yet they have been right each and every time. There is no effective system for reporting side effects. Oh, yeah, the VIR system. We're learning now that if you're a doctor, a lot of doctors we're now finding out are afraid. They're deathly afraid of filing a report. And those that do find out that nine times out of ten, they can't finish it, never gets there. Or if it does get there, it magically disappears. In other words, the entire VIR system is a fraud. There's some people that estimate, and I'm beginning to believe it. You know, it's not a matter that we we miss a few. I think we miss 90, 95, 99% of them. You have nurses that don't even know what the VIR system is. We have doctors deathly afraid to use it. And it is user unfriendly. And like I say, you finally get a report in there, then you find out two weeks later it, it disappeared. Why? Why are you being challenged and nobody's there to, to double check? They have ignored the reports on how it's affi- affecting human fertility. Data has been hidden. And I'm telling you, They've done irreversible damage to trust. I believe in the next several months, this is me personally, that God's hand is going to pull the veil back and expose the truth. And you're going to see you're going to see all these rats and rodents scurrying to get out of the light as quick as they can. What we do with this little time of respite If God does what I really believe he's going to do, and I I see the handwriting coming together, I see one little thing happening here and happening there, when even mainstream media like CNN is beginning to challenge some of the narrative, when even they can't hide this any longer and they can't risk their credibility, even they are beginning to back off the phony, fake propaganda narrative. And by the way, Don't waste your time at Rumble or these new things, Getter. They're still owned by the same tech tyrants. I mean, Getter uses Amazon servers and depends upon the good graces of Google and Apple. Don't waste your time. We're going to talk about social media next week and how what we need to do and how to, you know, stop being addicted to it. And let's find some alternatives. If you believe in the work that we're doing here at the program, would you consider giving us your financial support? You can make a check payable to Ancient Word Radio and mail it to Truth to Ponder, 5753 Highway 85 North, number 3248. 5753 Highway 85 North, number 3248, Crestview, Florida. And the zip code is 32536. That zip code again, 32536. Until next week, may God bless you. This has been Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. To find out more, visit our website, Truth, the number two, and the word ponder.com. That's Truth, the number two, ponder.com. Truth to Ponder, shining the light of truth.
in a darkening world.